But there's always this yeah. stigma that, you know, musicians are just not good with money. And I think it's because that creative side of their mind gets in the way. And here's the thing about like musicians. Musicians are not dumb people. Most of them, like in order to become really good at music, yeah, you have to be fairly intuitive. You have to be able to yeah. like push through small little adversities every day to get better. And you also have to like, you know, I mean, you've invested in yourself since you were maybe 12 years old and you saw, well, when I'm 30 or 25, I'm going to be a killer guitar player or a killer drummer. So they have visions of the future. They have the ability to think critically. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Zach Adkins. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to one of my good friends, Casey Dahl. She owns a life insurance agency. She has helped me over the years to get my financial situation kind of figured out. This is a very weird topic considering all the stuff that I normally talk about. And if you're a normal subscriber, you might be thinking, what the hell is going on? But this is a super important topic to me because as a business owner on the outside part of YouTube, I wanted to make sure that my family was taken care of, my wife was taken care of, that my, I know I ended up helping my, my grandma as well. I, you know, I just wanted to utilize as much of my resources around me and my income and, you know, the generated income from the business to take care of people around me. And I thought that this was a topic that was worth bringing up because I think a lot of musicians struggle with uh, not making an income. A lot of musicians make a pretty decent income, either through a Patreon, YouTube channel, bands, side projects, teaching music, whatever it may be. They struggle with, you know, the investing side of it because investing is scary and, uh, you know, putting your money into something and then losing it all or putting it into something and making this big thing, you know, this big return, but then not knowing what to do with it and, you know, everything in between. And talking with Casey, you know, she has helped me with my life insurance policies that I use actually to leverage my own cash and borrow against to purchase buildings and to, you know continue my entrepreneurial side and that's why i'm able to do youtube that i don't care if i get paid or not she has so much knowledge she is a a wealth of information when it comes to life insurance and the different ways that you can leverage the cash value i know this might seem a little boring but you guys could learn so much and it might help you out in your future endeavors and if you want to leave a legacy for your if you have children or your wife if something happens to you and just all the cool things. So I really hope you like this video. You can follow Casey on her socials. Everything's gonna be in the description below. She's a really great friend of mine and she's just fun to talk to. So without further ado, here is the episode. How are you? Doing fantastic. Thanks so much for having me here. Oh yeah, so for the people that don't know who you are, what do you do and uh, why should people listen to you? I own an independent insurance agency where we specialize in cash value life insurance, which sounds pretty boring and lame, but it's really not. Um, people should listen to me because, uh, well, you do uh, yeah. when it comes to cash value life insurance. Um, I teach people how to take advantage of of these products for cash accumulation and to have an asset that they can leverage fund their business, do whatever they want to do, buy a car, you name it. So it's a little bit out of the box um, financial strategy that, you know, people are not aware of. And I've been doing it for going on five years now. And I, I have a pretty big following on social media, just not on YouTube, like Mr. Sack here. So, so uh, you're mostly on TikTok. Is that that's like your correct. biggest yeah. channel? Yep. Yep. Okay. And, and I think you, you got me there? beat now. <laughs> 119,000? No, I'm followers? still at 105. Okay, okay. So for the meantime, for the meantime I got you. So that's actually platform. that's actually how I found out about you was through uh TikTok. Real quick, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do because only 7% of people that are watching my videos are subscribed. Just go ahead and click it real quick. It takes two seconds and it's free and it helps me out. Please, thank you very much. Okay, bye. Get back to the video. I, I hear people tell me all the time, like they learned about, about cash value life insurance, but they also learned like so many random life hacks and business ideas and ways to make money or um, different things like useful stuff on right. TikTok. Like it's really not what it used to be with just the dancing videos. No, it's totally not. Uh, and you know, real quick, cause 
you know, my channel is mostly followed by musicians and people that enjoy my musical commentary and just the weird stuff that I talk about, like VIP meet and greets and um, most recently people that are losing their hair as musicians, which is hilarious <laughs> to me because I'm losing yeah. my hair. So it just kind of works out. But uh, why would somebody care about the boring topic of life insurance if they're on my channel? Um, yeah. I think oh. that um, to set it up for you in that sense is everybody is, this sounds sad, but everybody's going to die eventually. Yeah. And a lot of people have family. They have a lot of uh, either kids or a wife or grandkids and stuff that they would like to not just die and then have nothing happen for their family. Yeah. And everybody has to go through that, whether you're a musician or just somebody watching a random YouTube video. And I'm not just about talking, you know, about the VIP stuff and the hair loss. That's just fun stuff. But I'm also a business owner, too. And I see the value in making sure that you have your money together and that you are providing uh, a legacy for your children or grandchildren. And that's essentially how you and I connected. And so this episode is definitely way different, but I think still useful yeah. in the sense that people are going to learn something that has nothing to do with music. But I do want to target it towards musicians because a lot of them struggle with money and they struggle with yeah you know, not just making money, but like, what do I do with the money I've made? So, uh, yeah. that is why in case people are like, what the fuck does this have to do with anything? That's what the <laughs> fuck it has to do with something. So yeah, hope that that works. So does that and I think that like, absolutely like people like you and I, like, I would like to refer to us as like regular ass people who, you know, don't come from money, don't come from a family of business owners or entrepreneurs and like, our parents didn't go to college or tell us to go to college. Right. Like, um, and like speaking from that experience in life, like when I found out about the cash value life insurance, and I'm sure it was like the same for you. It was like, why are everyday people not hearing about this or taking advantage of it? Because life insurance to like the middle class is term insurance where you pay 20 bucks a month for some death benefit. And the only person that really benefits is the people that you leave behind when you pass away. And knowing that there's cash value life insurance out there, like it, it's not something that's marketed towards your everyday people. Everyday people are told, no, you need this because what's going to happen to your wife when you pass away. Right. And most people like us think that that kind of insurance is a scam. <laughs> like, why am I paying this money for something that's not even not going to ever benefit me. But there's a way better way. And the rich use this all the time. Um, instead of just buying life insurance coverage for when you pass away, you could be simultaneously growing your money by tracking the stock, stock market without even learning how to invest and use the money dur during your lifetime by taking advantage of the benefits of life insurance, which is this idea that because I have say $250,000 of coverage over my head, I can now leverage against the money inside the policy, take a loan out from it, remodel the kitchen, buy my son a car, you know, pay off credit card debt, whatever it is, like the policy can actually benefit you throughout life instead of just benefiting people that you leave behind when you die. And so, um, it's it's wildly valuable, especially to hit on that point of like you don't have to learn how to invest like your money grows by tracking the S&P 500, which if you don't know what that is, it's just it's just a, a, a major index in the in the stock market that tracks how our economy is doing, which if you're even like slightly familiar with investing, you've probably heard of the S&P 500. So imagine taking advantage of that while also protecting the family and then knowing that your money is liquid and available to you anytime at all and you don't have to manage it. Like, all of those things scream like average person should take advantage of this. You don't have to risk your money and potentially lose it all. Um, and you're simultaneously doing the right thing by the people that you love. Right. So that was a lot to process for a musician. A we're going to dumb this down a little bit. 
I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, so <laughs> that that's kind of interesting because like most musicians will go on tour, they'll make some money, send it home, or just keep it for themselves. Maybe they're making 500 bucks a week on tour, or uh, yeah. whatever. I, I mean, some people make more, some people make less, but then when they get off tour, they're only touring for maybe nine months out of the year, and then they're off work for three months. And they're probably yeah. sitting there thinking like, what do I do with any of this money that's just hanging around? Because when I'm on tour, you know, maybe stuff's paid for here and there or the band pays for it. But then I come home and I've got some money sitting around. It's very similar to um, a couple of buddies of mine that are in like the military where they go and make money. They're overseas. Mm -hmm. They can't really spend it on a lot. And then they just send it home. And then when they come home, they're like, what do I do with some of this money? And I think that uh, mm -hmm. doing something like with what you're talking about, where you have a cash value life insurance and Essentially, if if I'm understanding it correctly, because I have it, I, I think I have three of them. But yeah. if I still understand it the way I do, is that it's it can be used as a a forced stock, no, uh, a forced savings account that you can say is going towards the stock market more so than a regular savings account at a bank. Because yeah. you buy a policy, so you're not investing, but you are buying a product that has benefits for you to use and will take care of whoever your benefici beneficiaries are who die, or when you die, they get taken care of, and then you still have your cash sitting in a policy that you can say, hey, I want that money or I need that money for something. It's not wrapped up in something else like a house or like a building or you know, whatever asset somebody might buy separately, but you're still earning interest mm -hmm. on that. And I think that that's yeah. a really clever way of essentially keeping your money over here while it works for you yeah. until you want to utilize it later. So I think that's a really 100%. important thing for people to like grasp. And maybe that's still boring, but it, you know, boring work sometimes, you know, money is kind of boring. It's yeah. just. How know. much is a, like a nice guitar? Like if someone was trying to buy a new guitar, how much on average does it cost? Uh, well, like a, those are two different questions, <laughs> a nice guitar <laughs> okay, and an true. average guitar. Um, <laughs> okay. so I mean like over here, these guitars here, you know, I, I got, well, I'll go over here. That one was, I mean, I'm endorsed with these guys, so I get a better rate, but like that one over there, brand new was about 3,500. That one was four okay. grand. The middle one was about four or five grand. The one over there was like four grand. And then that Ace Freely one, which was like two hundred and fifty dollars, but it cost me three thousand dollars because I met Ace Freely and he painted it and all that cool stuff. So okay, um, so my guitar maybe like thirty five hundred. Yeah, let's but say still. anywhere between two and three thousand would be like a really good guitar that most people would be like. I want that, but even a thousand dollars is still yeah. good. Okay, so let's say like a, an example that's relatable, right? This musician goes and puts five grand a year during tour season, they drop 5,000 into this policy. Next year, they do the same thing. Even on year two, if, instead of pulling money from their savings account or like throwing it on the credit card, they can go into the policy, take a loan for $2,000 and buy the guitar and pay themselves back. And e they don't have to do it immediately. Right. But that means they still have their liquid capital in their emergency fund or their savings account, whatever it is. And while that loan is outstanding, you're going to keep earning interest on the money like it never left. So the money bought you a guitar and it's still earning you interest and it's providing a death benefit over your head for your kids or your wife or whoever it is. So real quick, why would somebody because I know that this is a, a common thought that runs through people's brain is like why would somebody want to borrow money from themselves that doesn't like it doesn't yeah. really make sense uh, at first glance it, yeah 100 <laughs> percent um and it, it ties back into this idea that like if your money is just sitting in the bank and you need to use two grand of it well if you have ten thousand dollars and you need two thousand to buy the new guitar you now only have eight thousand dollars and your money was earning 0 0.01 percent to begin with. So now you're even earning less on, you know, your savings account, which is next to nothing as it is. So if you had 10 grand in one of these policies and you took out the 2000 instead of depleting the 10 grand, because maybe you have a dog and the dog gets sick and you got to go to the vet and you need the money from your savings account, whatever it is, emergencies, that's what it's supposed to be for. 
if you take the two grand and loan it to yourself, you're still earning interest on all $10,000 paying back that two grand to yourself over time or in a lump sum next tour season, whatever, um, is beneficial because again, you were earning interest on the money while you had it outstanding. But if you pay it back with interest, the interest goes back into the policy. So now you didn't lose out on those interest dollars. Let's say the interest for a couple of years was 300 bucks. Okay. Well now there's a $300 extra in your policy. You're not out $300. You just gave your policy more money. So the idea that, you know, people will go and get like a personal loan, right? Like times are tough in the economy right now, for sure. People get personal loans for all kinds of things with a personal loan. You, when you take that, get that money and you pay it back, who's going to get the interest, the bank, whatever third party that you're using, you'll never see that money again. So understanding how to leverage an asset that you control is wildly beneficial because you are the one that becomes the bank in a sense. Like some people say that I think it's pretty cheesy, but, um, I agree with that though. Like here's a, here's an example. I think that that might wrap it up because this is something that happened to me recently was, uh, I wanted to buy a guitar and I found one on reverb.com, which is just like a music instrument sharing site where you can sell your stuff or trade stuff with other people. And I saw a guitar similar to these ones back here that was about four grand or so. It was an Ernie Ball Music Man Majesty. And yeah. it was very pretty. It was like this bright red. I was like in love with it right away. And I and I had the money to spend. You know, I was like looking at our accounts and I'm like, okay. And uh, But I was also, I talked to my wife and I said, hey, I want to buy this guitar. And how should we pay for it like I just want to communicate with her about you know which credit card or do we put it on cash like how do you want to do it and she was like well why don't you give me like three or four days because we got some money coming from the businesses we're going to pay off one of these credit cards let's just put it on that card and I was like okay cool so I go and look at the website reverb and they offer a um, uh, financing I guess yeah Yeah, kind of uh, it's like a firm or something like that it's essentially yeah. like uh, what's that one bank that like uh, all the places use like Walmart and shit. I can't remember what they use. Synchrony yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a, it's like a basically a synchrony bank type thing. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I can just finance it through the website, you know, and it's just fine. So I go in and I click through and I'm like, well, if that just keeps it off our credit card, maybe that's a good idea. And we get to the end of the transaction and then it shows that here's how much the guitar was plus your fees and taxes and stuff but here's how much interest you're going to be paying on that guitar. And it was like Mm -hmm. 18% on three grand, four grand is not cheap. And like by the Mm -hmm. end of the three year payment, you know, repayment process, it was like, I was going to pay an extra like $800 for this guitar. So a $4,000 guitar plus fees is like 4,100 plus taxes is like 4,300. And now you tack on another $800 to do it all through the website I'm spending five grand on a $4,000 guitar. And right then all of that like excitement and warmth about this guitar just died. So I was like, no way am I spending an extra, like, cause the four grand was already kind of like, you know, that guitar's probably worth it, but you know, that's still pretty expensive. So I thought to myself in, and here's where the life insurance thing comes into play. I didn't have the life insurance at the time, but I was thinking about taking, you know, you take a loan from yourself, that concept of, I talked to my wife and I said, Hey, don't we have a credit card that gets uh, 3% cash back if we use it? And she was like, yeah, I have this card here. It's 3% cash back on all purchases. So I'm sitting here thinking, well, shoot at the very least, if we, if we use our money through the credit card, which gives us 3% cash back, I'll make $200 on the deal. So instead of spending $500 or sorry, $5,000, I paid, I could pay it all off with the credit card and not have the fees and the taxes through the website at all just would go to the credit card and I would make like $200 or something like that in interest back to myself, which means I got the guitar for $3,700 instead of 4,000. So that's a lot of math and a lot of bullshit, but that's just one small way to look at it. And I ended up not doing that at all. Ironically enough, 
I just went, well, what if I just call up Ernie Ball and see if they'll endorse me and I can get 50% off guitars for the rest of my life. <laughs> and then I got endorsed and then here we are. Thank you to Ernie Ball. Yeah. So, yeah. but that's an, that's a very, that's a more like kind of an outlandish way of looking at it for that. But, you know, when you're talking about your policy stuff, it's like, you know, instead of, yeah, putting it in the bank, making 0.01%, which is nothing, yeah just put it in a policy and then if you're on tour and you get in a freaking car accident and die or you know something happens which you know is possible then your yeah. wife back home might get a two hundred fifty thousand dollar death benefit because you were just putting a couple of 250 500 or whatever you know you could put into it and i yeah. to me that's just like it's kind of a no-brainer in my head you know just thinking of how money 100%. works i mean what is your thoughts on yeah. on on that i guess well, 100%. I mean, I think like you mentioned 18% through this payment plan, right? It's like na pay now or uh, pay later, you know, yeah. kind of systems. 18% is like pretty average, like credit card um, interest rates as well these days. The policy loan rates are between like two and 6%, like maxed out. Like you've taken loans from your policy at 2.75%. Yep. Like you, like nobody has access to those kinds of loan rates right. outside of life insurance. And like a big thing too, to mention is that when you take out the money, a loan is not taxable. So like you don't have to pay taxes on that money as income. So it's like invisible money to the IRS. Like it was your money. You put it in there. Yes. Like, you know, at the, the end of the year, you got to pay your taxes on all of your income. But if you're stuffing it into this policy, you want to take it out and use it like you're not going to get taxed on it again. And then, you know, we have the idea of this this really low interest rate um, as an alternative to credit cards, payback, pay later systems. It's wildly, wildly valuable to anybody on a small or large scale. Because that death benefit, too, that you're mentioning, like that goes to his wife, um, that death benefit gets paid out tax free as well. Like and the whole time you're earning interest, tax free growth, like because our tax system talks about life insurance being a protected asset class that works as a tax shelter. And I don't know about you guys, but like, I don't want to pay any more taxes than I have to pay right. <laughs> like whatsoever. So anything where I can set myself up to avoid taxes, please. Right. So on that note, to clarify a couple of things. So like, let's say that you were, you're, you're thinking like, I need to invest my money in whatever. And you say, well, I'll, why don't I just go to the S and P 500 and start trading yeah. against that myself because you you can you can go to what is that like think or swim or something like that is that the i can't there's remember one that called that yeah yeah, there, yeah you can go to any of these websites and just say i'm going to put 500 dollars yeah. on the s p or you know and then do yeah. like a uh you trade now and then you just keep like tacking on as it goes what is that called i can't remember the strategy but um you dollar say, cost averaging. Yeah, the dollar cost averaging. So you're just buying it no matter what, hopefully for a long time, and then yeah. over and over the course of time, it gets more money. So on your point is that if you did that yourself, let's say you made in the course of a year a thousand bucks in you know yeah. your earnings for what you put into the market, yeah. and then you take all that money out, and then you made that thousand dollar profit. Well, you have to now pay tax on that thousand dollar profit. Right. Yes, so yeah. really, and if it's yes, at, I think it's 25% or more, depending on which state you're in and depending on how it was made. So, I mean, you're yeah. really walking away with $750. So what you're mm -hmm. saying though, is if you do the exact same thing through a life insurance policy, you can have that th same thousand dollar, you know, in this example, that $1,000 profit, yeah. but then you loan yourself the money. So you don't actually take it out of the policy. You don't withdraw it. You just loan it to yourself and then you don't have to pay taxes on any of that thousand because loans aren't taxable. Is that essentially what you're saying? What you're saying? 100%. Yeah. So, 100%. and now to be, to be fair, I know quite a bit about it, not because I'm an insurance I was gonna agent, say, like you're, but <laughs> you're just, doing really well, <laughs> but it's because I have three of them, you know, I believe yep. in them so much, you know, uh, well, I guess I have two that are IULs and one of them is just a regular one because that's for a building I bought, but. Um, yeah. But that's yeah, something, you know, bombs. a good example is uh, you helped my wife with one 
where yeah. her mom was uh, in a kind of like a retirement home and she was, you know, we kind of knew within about a year or so she was going to pass and we wanted to set something up with some money for the grandkids, but she was too old to, you know, get approved for any kind of life insurance, which makes sense because she was like in her seventies. But yeah. my wife, you know, we talked to you about what we should do and you suggested that, well, what if, a, you know, my wife gets a policy on herself and then you put that mm -hmm. same money away every month into this essentially, you know, the IUL that is essentially a forced savings account, but every month you got to yeah. pay for it. And then when her mom passed away, we had all of this cash value just sitting in this policy because we never touched it. And then we were able to borrow that money tax free to ourselves and pay for her mom's funeral, pay to travel out to where we needed to go to meet her family and paid for everybody there and we were able to give her grandkids money as a like you know grandma's gone but here's something from her and you know we were able to give each of them a little bit of money for now and the kicker too is that because the policy is on alicia uh when she dies we didn't get a massive policy necessarily but each when she dies her death benefit will go to those three grandkids which are her nieces and nephews so it's generational wealth and it'll get to them tax free. So I think that's a really clever way of thinking about how your money can be utilized, not just for yourself and your current situation, but for future family members too. Like in this instance, grandma couldn't leave a lot of money, you know, but Alicia and I set aside money. So that way when she passes, they get something. And I think that's a really cool way to, utilize this situation and it's all tax free because we're not taking the money we're loaning ourselves the money and it'll be paid back when she dies because the insurance company pays off all those loans when she dies and so i think it's a really cool way to do it yeah 100 i mean our our economy runs on debt like and we're told like that debt is bad like it's don't get into it don't have it like it, it nothing good comes from it right like on your your average person mm -hmm. however like the entire economy, every dollar that you have is is technically debt. Like if you don't know, the United States of America is in a thirty six trillion dollars of debt right now, right? So, what are business owners, corporations, banks, wealthy people doing? They buy everything with debt because it's tax free. Mm -hmm. They put all of their money into assets and they borrow against it, and they go out and buy more assets or do whatever they want to do. So, why can't we do that. Why? Because we're taught that to to make money and to be, get rich or get wealthy, you have to put your money in the stock market and make as much money as possible and don't touch it and leave it there. But that's right. the opposite of what people who actually have money and understand how it works. That's the opposite of how they do things. All right. It, if you're following traditional financing, you're saying, okay, I put my money in a you know, in the stock market and I put my money in my, my bank account in the, my savings account. Well, all you're doing is allowing the banks to borrow out your money and leverage it, and give it to other people. And you're making wall street rich, right? And wall street, what are they doing it? What are they doing? They're borrowing against all of the money that they have in their accounts and loaning it out to other people. Like, so whether it's a, you know, $200 a month or a thousand dollars a month, I think anybody can see value in building an asset like this, be able to leverage it and understand how like debt works um, in their favor. It's, you know, yeah. I think that I think that's interesting because when most people hear the word asset, they're thinking something like a car or a house or something tangible that you can actually see, touch, feel, drive, live in or whatever. But they very yeah. rarely look at something like an insurance policy as an asset. It's more of like, that's just yeah. something responsible people get. So when they die, you know, like my, yeah. my, I think my business pays for that for me or something like that's the most they really try exactly. and think about it. But if you take yeah. a couple of seconds to say, Hey, you know, and, and here's the thing about like musicians and I want to keep bringing it back to them because that's mainly who watches yeah. this channel, but it's like musicians are not dumb people. You know, I know we get kind of a yeah. bad rap because, you know, we're just, most of them are a bunch of stoner fucking, you know, they just go out and hang out and get drunk or something. But it's like most of them, like in order to become really good at music, in order to become really proficient at an fun. instrument, yeah, you have to be fairly intuitive. 
you have to be able to yeah. like push through small little adversities every day to get better and you also have to like really think about you know i mean you've invested in yourself since you were maybe 12 years old and you saw well when i'm 30 or 25 i'm going to be a killer guitar player or a killer drummer so they have visions of the future they have the ability to think critically but there's always this yeah. stigma that you know musicians are just not good with money and i think it's because that creative side of their mind gets in the way but this is a very creative way of looking at money that i think could if you look at it this way it could charge that little piece of your brain that's like man you know and most most musicians are anti-government too you know they hate being told what to do they're rebels and this is a great way to be a rebel and not and still yeah. have your money be yours and be protected yeah. and then continue yeah. to take care of people so and that's what triggered me about it is like you know i have a business and when you start making even a little bit of money it doesn't have to be much even a couple grand a month you're like how do i take this and not lose it because then i got you know then the game's over and doing something like yeah. this is really interesting to me and that's what you know, made me, uh, I just went on TikTok and I typed in IULs because I just didn't really know. And then your videos popped up and then you do a bunch of creative, mm -hmm. funny content and some serious content and, you know, a bunch of skits and stuff that kind of make it more fun. And so I, that's what kind of triggered me to be like, this person like understands a different subject, or I guess I should say a different person that would care about this subject. You know, not just old people yeah. that need life insurance. You could get life insurance at <laughs> freaking 10 years old if you wanted to get your kid on it or something. You know, like there's tons of yeah, ways literally. to do this. Yeah, so 100 percent. And I think I mean, I don't know what else you're doing with your money right now. That sounds bad. Like, are you putting your money in the stock market at all? Are you investing in like a brokerage account? Me? Yeah. No. No. Do you know? Do you know? Like investing 101 stuff like to go out and do it yourself no i mean no I've, like and, i mean and, and have i made you have to learn at all like by, oh no by having all of this money like you just earned you know like more than ten thousand dollars by not learning how to invest last year yeah i mean like you didn't have to learn how to invest and like you made money from your money yeah like well, you know which yeah. i think is a really good point like too like I'm not a investment advisor, like just get that clear. Like, but I know enough about um investing to be to be dangerous, but like the cash value life insurance strategy, like you don't have to learn how to invest. You don't have to know all of the, you know, ins and outs of the the stock market. It is a set it and forget it, and you don't have to worry about losing your money type of strategy, which I think a lot of people need. And I hear that a lot that like, I like, I understand like that investing is important and, you know, you need to play the long game, but I also like, just don't feel comfortable putting my money somewhere where I could lose it all. And like, I don't have time to learn exactly what to invest in and all of this stuff. I have my other, you know, my whole life going on outside of here, but there's gotta be something that I can do. And like, this is it. Like, this is what you can do. Like, we didn't even mention the idea that, like, the policies literally can't lose money. Like, you're tracking the stock market and you're investing technically, but there's a 0% floor. Like, you have a, a fallback. Like, you're never going to see these losses in your account ever. So you don't have to worry about this up and down thing that people talk about with investing that scares a lot of people away. Right. I was actually going to bring that up that, you know, you can, you can set it to where... The, the basically like you have your floors and your ceilings of like this is how much you can make here's how much you can lose and if you set that at zero if the market tanks down underneath that you didn't make any money but you didn't lose any money that year and that's huge because yeah. you know you go and do bitcoin or something which a lot of people they they want to invest but they're too scared and you pointed out that out and i exactly. agree because i'm scared of bitcoin and the other shit like you know, I, I mean, because like, you know, you start I lost thinking a lot of money to Bitcoin yeah, <laughs> and different cryptocurrencies a few years ago. And it's worth like, I mean, I think it's worth doing if you if if you're willing to go in. But I, you know, and try it. But like I look at it like going to the casino in that instance. It's like I go into yeah. when I went to the casino one time in my entire life on my 21st birthday, I got drunk as shit. And I haven't drank since, but uh, I drank a little bit, but not like I don't get drunk. But uh, it's like. <laughs> 
I went in there and I, I brought a hundred dollars with me because that's all I had. And I said, if this if this is gone, I'm walking away. And I didn't bring anything yeah. else with me. No credit cards, no debit cards, nothing. I lost all hundred dollars in like the first thing that I did because I was <laughs> super wasted on a white Russian, but whatever. Yep. Not not a person, oh but the drink. Oh my god. And uh, mm-hmm. so <laughs> I got milk and alcohol. Yeah, it was good though. <laughs> so it is. Uh, it is good. It's good. So, but that's the point. Is like. I've thrown money into Bitcoin and, you know, like Dogecoin and SafeMoon yeah. and a bunch of other like little things that I'm thinking to myself, you know, I don't think this is going to win big, but, you know, I could just see, you know, leave my money here. And then six months, you might make a little bit of money, but then other people, they just like skyrocket. But you have to be like mentally and emotionally prepared for that. And I just don't think a lot of people yes. want to be, not that they couldn't be, but they just don't want to have that emotional stress. Yeah. And, uh, I, and with this, it's like you said, it's like a set it, forget it thing where you put your money in there every month, you pay your policy and then you get the benefits of if I die, whoever's my beneficiary of this policy gets money. But I'm also making a little bit yeah. of interest on my money and I can borrow it any time I want, which is cool. And it's tax free. And the older I live, the more money is available to me because you continue making money your whole life, which is great. What is your, what is your take on, uh, cause another comment I see a lot is where people say, you know, IULs are, you know, not a good, uh, not a good product to buy just buy whole term policies and then invest the rest. Like what is your take on that? I don't like that, but I'm curious what your thoughts are. If there's any merit to that or if yeah. it's all bad, what do you think? buying term and investing the rest like if you want to be in the investing world you're up for the game of the roller coaster of the stock market ups and downs and you have the emotional capacity to not pull out all of your money when things get bad um and real to quick, keep buying <laughs> what that's what she said oh my god okay. <laughs> um then having a term policy just for the sake of protecting your family, being able to pay your mortgage. If you were to pass away, great. Get a 30 year term, put your money in the stock market. Um, and you're hopefully going to be set. Right. Like, I mean, that's a, hopefully that's a, you keep doing it over and over again, buying high, buying low, not pulling out. <laughs> that's what, um, and you know, understanding what to invest in and making the right investment choices, which is not something that you just like, I'm going to open a, a Charles Schwab or a Vanguard account and like learn how to invest right now. Like you can't do that. Like you can't, it takes learning what to invest in and understanding the, what, where your money's going to make that effective. Um, now I would be lying to say like, I don't like invest in the stock market as well. Like that to me is like my risky money. That's me gambling. Like I don't touch crypto anymore because I got burned by crypto, Dogecoin, all of that. It's pretty volatile. But it's very volatile. Like the stock market is less volatile than crypto. Um, but again, like I had to take a lot of time to understand where the money should go. And like social media is free. You can find out what to invest in and like listen to other people and get advice really quickly. Um, it's just then this, this idea of you don't have much like liquidity. If you want to get the money out, you need to sell. You could be selling at a loss depending on when you need the money. Um, if you're selling at a gain, you could be paying taxes. So it's just understanding that the, the life insurance is not an investment. If you want an investment and you're looking for really high returns over a long period of time, that is what you should do. 100%. Um, just go into it knowledgeable about where you're putting your money. And then you, if you have a family protect, get a term policy and you're, you're good to go. I honestly, like my, my belief is that you should have all of them like i have a term policy and an iul just like you do um and then i still have other avenues for for earning for growing my money like i'm still investing in the stock market and then i'm in the real estate game right so i'm not just like oh the iul is all you need um you know and then it, that's good enough it's not good enough right unfortunately like you can't just have life insurance and your savings account either like you should have more places 
that you're putting your money that offer different things. So, and do you, I would which, buy which ones, term investments. Which, what, which do you okay. think, uh, and again, you're not a financial advisor, so nobody listened to any of this, yeah. but in your world, <laughs> what do you think are, like you mentioned real estate, which I agree because yeah. some of the richest people in the world are, they got that way through real estate um, yeah. by investing in either, you know, single family homes or duplexes or large, you know, like apartment complexes or multiple of all of those combined. So I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I also believe that because you are also a business owner too, I think that the biggest investment anybody could make would be in a business for mm-hmm. themselves in something that, mm-hmm. you know, either they really care about or something that even if they don't care about it as much, they can make a decent profit from it in order to keep growing it. So for example, mm-hmm. you have your, I don't think that when you were five years old, you were like, I want to be a life insurance agent. That is all I want, you know, and, <laughs> no, but <not> at all. <laughs> however, you know, sometimes the cart goes before the horse a little bit because you have to go, yeah. what is an industry that does okay? And it has, yeah a long-term investment potential in, as a career and then you chose to say this is something i want and now you're running a business that does really really well and you have money to yeah. invest now but you came from nothing and now you have something yeah. you've done all of these things so you also didn't yeah. just invest in one thing you invested in multiple what are all of the things that you've invested in and not necessarily to tell people what to do but what worked for you yeah, yeah. i mean uh... The first thing I ever invested in was I I got myself a CD, which sounds so lame, but I totally had a CD that I, I don't know, I locked up some money for like 19 months thinking like it was one for me to not be able to touch the money so that I was like, yep, it's gone. It's out of my hands. I can't do anything about it. I thought I was going to make more than I did. Um, I, I mean, I made pennies on <laughs> on the dollar of what I thought I I was uh, gonna make I did not make much so it was really like uh, underwhelming and disappointing um why do you, you think, think like, that you're was bank. well I mean it, it full transparency like I put away like six figures um from getting a settlement and I was like, okay, I don't want to touch this. I don't want to fuck this up. Right. So I'm going to like give the bank a hundred grand. And it, it was just the time it was, it was before COVID before COVID hit um, or like right when COVID hit, like interest rates are not that high. Like I just didn't have a full like understanding of what like 4% APR meant, even on a hundred grand. Like you think that's going to be a lot more than it is. It was like not even $3,000. Right, because you know, people like think it, that four grand mean or four percent means four thousand dollars, but if it's APR, it's divided a little differently. Yeah, so like I was like, "What the hell did I just do?" Like, and you had to pay taxes, um, and you have to pay taxes on it. Yeah, you get that ten ninety nine. Like, hey, you made money. So, so I did that. It worked out for me because I didn't want to use the money and waste it, and so. What's interesting is that by the time I got that money back, I was already um, like three months into having started Power 3 Financial, which is my insurance agency. And like now I needed the money. So that was great. But going through that time of like putting money away and not just blowing it was really important for like my overall like trajectory. Like we were all living through COVID. Like I was working like three jobs and two of them were shut down and Um, you know, like I could have used the money, but it forced me to, you know, take a risk on something, which was getting my insurance license, um, and then going on TikTok and starting to talk about like the value I saw in the product, which led me to start my own business. And I'm extremely grateful for that, um, experience. I recommend if you can start your own business, um, doing anything like Zach said, like that you're passionate about or that you think is sustainable year round for, you know, the long haul that you you're good at, like you should do it. Like why, why are we more inclined to work 40 hours a week for somebody else and not work 40 hours a week, like for ourselves? Um, the payout is so much greater, um, 
mentally, emotionally <laughs> than working for somebody else is. So if you can start a business, like that would be like my number one recommendation. You start a business. That's when I started making money finally. And it takes, it takes almost a year to start really making money when you open a business, unless you're just, you know, you're fully prepared. It was my first business. A year later, I'm able to put money into the stock market. And I did a lot of research. Um, honestly, my, my, my investing experience was not super great because I went the route of like, I bought Target and I bought Amazon and I bought Disney and I bought gold um, and I didn't buy like low cost index funds. And so the emotional game there was like, not great. Like I constantly was like wanting to pull out <laughs> and, and take my money. Um, and I ultimately did. I did take a lot of the money out there, but then I put money into Dogecoin and I didn't pull out <laughs> um, when it was really high, right? So I lost the money again because it it went down and crashed and like it was over. So what you're so, saying is like you're human. You're not yeah, some I mean, super 100%, like, genius investor. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not at all. But I'll tell you what, I have my IUL, my life insurance policy. And, um, you know, I haven't had to, there's not an emotional game with it. Mm -hmm. We're, we got to a point where we're able to, we're building um, an additional unit on the property. And so we got to put in a kitchen and do, you know, things that people do to build houses from the ground up. I took the IUL, pulled out money and paid for the kitchen and some of the stucco on the house. And I'm going to keep earning interest on that money. And the idea that I don't have to worry about like, it's not in the account earning interest. I have to pay taxes on it. Um, you know, like I have to pay interest to somebody else. We've considered getting hard money loans, you know, personal loans, get opening new credit cards, you name it. Having that IUL has been huge. Um, and the idea that I'm just going to give it back to myself because like I'm in control is like, it's the best thing that I I have done with my money to this point. And I've done a lot of different things as I just like mentioned. Um, it has the most payout because of the control, the liquidity and the, the tax advantages. It just does. And it, a lot of people in the crypto world, they actually use the insurance to take money from the cash value to get crypto or to put into other investments or to riskier. buy real estate. Yeah. Riskier stuff. So you use your less risky, you're safe to, go and do riskier things. And um, it can be a really good, good, like foundation of starting, you know, getting into, uh, I don't know, like starting your financial profile portfolio um, and, and ultimately building, building something that is going to benefit you long-term, like through ups and downs, that's never really going to go away. So I think the good, I, a good example for, you know, somebody that does music that would be like a business would be your band. You know, I think a lot of people just see a band as like a fun thing that you get to do with your buddies, but it can really be a profitable thing, you know, if you really try. 100%. And you can sell merch, you can sell stuff online, you can sell your tickets, you can sell, I mean, even inside of the band group, I know a lot of uh, musicians that sell their music lessons to people while they're on tour. So, I mean, there's a whole lot of yeah. stuff that can come from one band unit, which would be your business. And then you say, okay, as a band, we made this amount of money for the year. Let's put it all into an IUL and then pay ourselves from the policy. And then it's not taxable yeah. income to you, but you're still getting your money. And then yeah. you can use that to invest in, you know, maybe you borrow the money to buy a van or you buy borrow the money to buy your merch. Yeah. So you're not just taking cash and throwing it away. You're saying, I'm going to make money on my cash from the band in full over here and borrow what I need from the policy and then go yeah. from there. And I think that's a real, that could be a really smart way to do it too, is just thinking mm -hmm. like, instead of thinking this way of just, I make money, I spend the money, I keep making money. I spend the money. It's like, I make money. I put it over here. I keep making more money. I keep putting it over here. When I need money, I'm just going to borrow it and put it back, borrow it, put it back. And then just keep yeah. flowing this forward because you still make interest on all of the money you made and then you borrow the rest. I think that that could be a really interesting exactly. way to do it too because, I mean, yeah, most people exactly. don't think about businesses when it comes to like 
you know, it's just all, yeah, we, yeah, we make a little bit of money. We get a 1099 from the venue. Okay. Bye. But I mean, I've made in some of my vans, I mean, you know, you'll make five grand in one show and that doesn't seem like a lot, yeah. but you do enough shows, you make good money. And it's like, yeah, where did that money go? And I was too not in the yeah. right headspace at the time to think, you know, hey, how about instead of paying you guys right this moment, we're going to put this money over here. Now, I will say that uh, what about the people that are just kind of struggling to get ahead anyway? Like, you know, that's another thing I see where they're thinking, yeah. I don't have 5000 or or $1,000 a month to put away. What would you recommend somebody like that does? Yeah. So what I would do is right now, like it's really important to, if you want to get in on something like this, to do it while you're still young and healthy and nothing has come up otherwise to make you uninsurable, right? There are term insurance policies. Like for example, I have my IUL and then I have a term policy that I pay like 30 bucks a month for. But the reason I got it, have extra life insurance coverage. Okay, sure, fine. But ultimately, because I have this term policy already, if I decided at any point that I want another IUL, that term policy will just transfer over into a permanent policy. I don't have to prove that I'm insurable. I could have gotten diabetes, gotten overweight, got cancer, you name it. And the insurance carrier is going to give me a brand new permanent policy with the same exact health rating, no questions asked. So as a placeholder, getting a term policy, protect the family, get that set up. The second you're ready to actually put more money into it and you have the funds to grow the cash value, you're already done. You've taken the hard part out of that process. And then two, the term policies that I would recommend, they always come with extra living benefits. So Let's say you get in a car accident, you break both your hands, right? Your policy is now going to accelerate a portion of the death benefit coverage you were paying for tax-free to you while you're alive to cover your medical expenses. Yeah. Let's touch on that for a second, just in case people zoned out, like you get living benefits with life insurance, not just a death benefit. I think that's something people yeah. don't realize. I didn't realize it until I got the policy, but there's, isn't there three things that it comes with or is it two? Cr- critical illness, chronic illness, and terminal illness. Yeah. So that three all sounds the same like, to me. Severity. Yeah. Well, critical illness. So critical illness could be like a minor heart attack, a stroke, you know, stage one cancer diagnosis, bad car accident. Thing, things like that. Anything like with your policy, for example, if you're not able to go and go to work or function and do your daily things for 90 days consecutively, you qualify for a critical illness and the policy is going to give you a certain amount of money in a lump sum, say 50 grand. Okay. A chronic illness means that um, there are six different daily activities and those are getting out of bed, getting dressed going to the bathroom, taking a shower, feeding yourself and driving a car, like normal things that we do as human beings. If you can't do two of them on your own, so you can't uh, drive a car and you can't uh, take a shower by yourself for some reason, then you qualify for a chronic illness, right? And that would be your hands example. You broke both your hands in a bad accident. You can't do all of those things by yourself, most likely. Policy is going to pay out a portion of the death benefit to you tax-free. Could also be Alzheimer's disease, you know, heart attack, cancer, uh, stroke as well. Um, But ultimately, it's that daily activity thing. And then a terminal illness like is much more bleak, but like if you are given a 24 month period to live, they're pretty much going to pay out that entire death benefit to you in a lump sum. Usually it's 90% of it directly to you tax free. Here's your money. Enjoy the rest of your life. So like term policies come with that. IULs come with that. Yeah. So that seems pretty, uh, I mean, it, it sounds sad because it is, but there's a shining light around it of saying, if you have this policy, at least you get those three options. You know, if you have three, one of three or three of three happen to you and that happens while you're alive. So you can still function and still do your thing. So I think that's, I think that that's something that's really overlooked with life insurance. And, uh, 
Because most people just, again, they think of it like, I think my job pays for that. And I, if I die, somebody gets money. You know, they and just don't they think about don't it. offer those benefits no. and at they all wouldn't. through your work. No, they wouldn't. No. So, no. Uh, well, and Zach, how likely is it that you're going to, you're going to like die first other than just like getting sick? Die first between people. me and Alicia? No, like um, if you're just, you know, living life, like is it more likely that you're just going to like get hit by a bus and die or like you're going to have some kind of illness come up? I have no idea. I don't, I try not no. to think about that. My obsessive compulsive <laughs> disorder would put me in a <laughs> frenzy. It's like the horror, like this is where like I definitely didn't dream about being in the life insurance industry as a kid, but like, like understanding, you know, the world, like you're more likely to have like some kind of illness come up that takes mm. you out of work. Like then you are to just die all of a sudden. Well, that's like, fair. People die randomly, of course, car accidents, different things, but like more likely to have some kind of health problem than to just like drop dead, you fair. know? So not planning for illnesses, like is really just doing a, a disservice to yourself. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that there's some benefits to it. And on top of just having, not just having the place to put your money. Cause that's one that's like, yay, I'm thinking of the future. Cause there's like three things there. Like I'm thinking of right now, thinking of making myself some money for the future. And then I'm thinking past my own life to take care of people after me. And that's how these like really, really rich people get away with this stuff because what, mm -hmm. and, and I say get away with, and I don't mean that in a bad way is that they get away with putting their money into these things that end up paying their children and their children's children and their children's children's children. And then they say, well, they're not going to give any of their money to their children. And it's like, well, yeah, they're not going to give any of this business money to their children, but most of them have death benefits set up on themselves to pay their children, grandchildren. So their business money can be given to something else. That's going to grow it futuristically rather than giving it to the kids where I think it's like the second or third generation is the one that loses most of the money that was built three generations before. Right. So it, right. it makes sense to give it to somebody else rather than your own children, but then give your children something through life insurance. It's something that a lot of them utilize heavily, I think. So 100%. Uh, 100%. Well, I think that at this point, how would people be able to get a hold of you or if they were interested in just talking to you about it, what would be the best way right. to communicate, but also what should be their steps even before that, if they're curious about it, yeah. what should they do? What do you think? For sure. I go check out if you have TikTok or Instagram, go and follow or just view the page, uh, Casey, the dollar. And that's not doll how you see it on the screen. It's D O L L A R. Um, I'm sure Zach will put that somewhere in the description of the video or whatnot. Um, but yeah, go check out my TikTok and my Instagram. Most of the videos are the same um, on each page, so whichever one you prefer. Um, and watch through watch through some of the content. I just post straight educational content nonstop. I actually have my own podcast as well called the year and asset podcast that you can find on Spotify or YouTube. So do some digging into how I talk about things. If this wasn't enough for you, um, because this was pretty brief, um, go check out that. If you want to get in contact with me directly, you can go to my website, www.power3financial.com, um, or send me an email, which is just my handle on social media, Casey, the dollar at power3financial.com and uh to let me know that you came from this youtube channel here with zach and that you're either you know a musician or not or or how you found me and i will i'll be looking forward to hearing from you and be honored um if you know this wasn't totally boring <laughs> and that you got some value out of it yeah yeah well yeah and that's the thing guys like you know it it's totally not on topic with like people being bald and you know vip meet and greets but in my opinion the only reason i talk about that stuff is because you know like with the meet and greets and vip is i want people to get the value for their money i want people to not just go into something and get screwed over like i don't make any money from telling people to go and hang out and talk to you about their future we aren't in cahoots nope. you don't pay me anything <laughs> no it doesn't happen but this you're just pro bono you're some yeah <laughs> you're somebody that i have utilized in my mm. life insurance world and also my wife has and a couple friends of mine that i've sent your way 
And yeah. that's the reason I wanted to do this was just so people can say, hey, you know, I don't want to invest. I don't want to worry about stocks. I don't want to whatever. And I've got Spread a kid. And, yeah, I've got a kid. Yeah. Or I've got a wife and I'm on tour or whatever. And for them to say, hey, you know, this is something worth looking into and worth putting my money towards. And if it works for them, that's great. If it doesn't, then that's fine, too. You know, it's I'm yeah. all about everybody just doing better for themselves and hopefully yeah. saving their money and. Yeah, so I appreciate you being here. and I uh, appreciate you having me. Yeah, yeah, and I hope that everybody that is interested reaches out, and hopefully you can get them helped out, and if not, maybe yeah. a family member of theirs, whatever. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. but I appreciate you being here. Hit me up. Of course. Thanks so much. I, it was great, Zach. I yeah. appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I am. Bye, great. everybody. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs>